good evening everybody welcome to the paradigm shift uh, you know the most beautiful memories from my childhood were the holidays that my families took be it the snow capped mountains of kashmir or the tea gardens of assam or the southernmost tip of india or the beautiful mesmerizing forts and palaces and museums of rajasthan today our guest mr karni jasol he is the director of the merangar museum and we are going to talk to him all about um that goes in into the making of uh, the museum so we'll just wait till he joins in hi seema hi nisan i was <clears throat> just a little earlier in the day i was reading about um Merangar and um it's one of the most beautiful well kept uh, museums and forts in uh, Rajasthan so and it stands tall oh there he is let me Good evening. Good evening, Deepika. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Okay, so I was just telling everybody that you know, uh, most beautiful memories from my childhood were when we went, we took holidays together, and some of them were uh, at the forts and uh, palaces and museums in Rajasthan. So. Mm -hmm. you must tell us about everything about your museum so should we start yeah this this is better yeah. this is better sure that yeah. so we are um, housed in a 15th century fort um, in jodhpur uh, sort of uh, jodhpur is called the cultural capital of rajasthan and the second largest uh, city of rajasthan um, so it's a it's a fort it's a single mass of uh, fortification uh but built over a long period of uh, time and uh, the grand are its uh, proportions that the english poet rudyard kipling uh, called it the work of angels and giants um yeah. it sees it seized its function as a defensive architecture um in the uh, 20th century uh, when the royal family moved out of uh, the fortified structure into more european style palaces because now you during the time of the british you didn't need heavily fortified uh, buildings uh, okay. so that was uh, early 20th century was a time when uh, the fort was sort of you know not used as a regular building uh, so okay. then it, it there's a long period uh, between uh, say 1930s to uh, 1970 that the fort is pretty much closed and only used for some exclusive events uh, okay. it is only in uh, 70s uh, to be very precise in 1972 that a foundation is established by the jodhpur royal family um, okay. to turn it into a museum and open it uh, to public as a heritage site um, mm -hmm. and a place of learning and enjoyment Okay, how nice. So I I am very eager to know about your childhood and your early days. Did you actually get to spend uh, time at this fort or no? So my um uh, I I'm I'm born in Jodhpur and my parents uh, uh lived in Jodhpur. Uh my I mean it's a strange uh, uh thing that my father uh is the former director of the fort. Okay. Um so I'm 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 second generation museum curator and uh, museum director. <laughs> okay. So there was there was a a time that we were living um, outside the of, of the fort but my father joins uh, the fort uh, as a director. Uh, but since uh, 83 uh, or 84 to be very precise um, the director's accommodation is within the fort. So you can say that I grew up uh, uh, with the fort uh, as my as my childhood so i, I have very strong memories um as as a child living in the fort okay 
no because uh, you know like i'm sure because of all the forts that i have uh, visited they can be very very daunting for a little child there's so many secret passages and this you could have gotten lost <laughs> so i'm sure you would have some people already always keeping an eye on you was was that the case Uh, one of the advantages of uh, when the fort is was turned uh, into a museum was that yeah. apart from the apart from the director's residence, uh, a lot of the other staff, uh, especially the security, uh, was staying on the property. So it was okay. not that the fort was a haunted uh, place or was not uh, filled with life. Uh, during the day, it would buzz with visitors, and uh, in the evening, you had staff members and their children. um in and around uh, the uh, the place um so it was very much a lived in fort okay so oh, cool okay so uh, tell me kanni when did you decide that you i mean you already said that your dad was um, you know the director for the museum but when did you decide you wanted to uh, be the director of this museum merangal museum no i think uh, Uh, there was no sort of you know ambition to uh, become uh, the director of the fort i mean the i think the early seeds of an interest uh, in the museum i would say the serious interest in museum uh, was when i was in baroda uh, pursuing my uh, bachelor's in history at the maharaja sayaji rao university um, of course i was through uh, my father and living uh, on the property was introduced to the idea of the museum uh, and it was a very familiar space uh, for me uh, but my early my early ambitions uh, were to go into air force uh, then it uh, turned into doing an mba uh, but i think finally sort of it got anchored around uh, pursuing artistry so okay. i went on went on after doing my ba honors uh, to do artistry and physiology um, mm-hmm. at Uh, the Baroda University, and I think that's where I would say, as late as my college days, that I thought that I would seriously pursue uh, a career okay. in 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 museums. Beautiful. And you have to remember that by by then, um, you know, if I would say museology, most people would say music. Are you doing something in music? Um, <laughs> uh, so it was very underdeveloped, and I I would still say that you know it is still catching the imagination mm-hmm. of younger people. right so that was going to be my uh, next question so like anybody who wants to do museology uh, what is uh, you know what is the relevance in today's uh, this this career path in today's time and what would you advise children who uh, young uh, people who would want to go into this like for you it was very uh, it was almost seamless because you know you had yeah. this thing you know ready to take over kind of a thing but what would you uh, to a lay person per se for a, for a country of the scale of india and with such diverse cultural heritage uh, i i see that we really need an army of uh, museum curators and and heritage professionals um okay. and uh, which, which is which is not the case at the moment we are understaffed uh if you if you look at country uh, as a large um we, we don't have the required number of uh, professionals uh, to look after our collections and museum spaces or art gallery spaces so okay. i i would i would, I would uh, sort of you know uh, really encourage uh, people who are interested in arts uh to explore the field of artistry and museum um people even who are in sciences to explore the uh, uh field of uh, conservation um uh, and within the larger context of art and heritage management uh, you have conservation um uh, heritage uh, conservation which includes even architects who are specialized in uh, architectural conservation uh and uh, you know conservation of material objects uh, and of course art history and museum studies so it's a, it's, okay. a, it's a vast field um uh, within which uh, people from different disciplines uh, can plug in right 
okay that that is amazing because uh, like i just thought okay you know somebody who has to uh, uh, just study museology and art history and that's it but like i like the way how you you know brought in everybody from everybody from different walks of life that can you know be a part of uh, curating a museum that is good uh, tell us your role as a director in uh, the merengar museum so i uh, jo- joined as a curatorial staff um, so which meant that uh, i was uh, looking after the collections uh, and curating the collections and slowly uh, grew into the position uh, of a museum director um, a museum director's uh, role uh, is is in many ways multidisciplinary uh, it is to look after the programming uh, of the of the museum and also administration Uh, of the museum so it's it's yeah. part it's it's part management and and part uh, curatorial so you have to drive the, the the curatorial vision of the museum and then you to also drive the the management of the museum so which includes like we have nearly more than 300 uh, staff members uh, more than 10 departments uh, and it's is synergizing all that energy uh, keeping the visitor at the core Uh, of this idea and and mm. and, and taking the institution, taking the institution forward okay that that seems uh, cool okay and uh, tell us you know you have curated a lot of international exhibitions and which have been appreciated by the uh, you know by the international audiences tell us something sure. about that yeah so we are among uh, a few uh, private indian museum um who have successfully uh, curated international exhibitions um my last exhibition was called peacock in the desert uh, it was okay. one of the largest peacock in the desert the royal arts of jodhpur and uh, uh, it was uh, one of the largest uh, exhibitions uh, coming out from a private museum uh, for an international audience uh, it was in partnership with museum of fine arts in houston and uh, it uh, traveled to three Uh, american museums uh, and uh, two sorry two american museums and one canadian museum uh, okay. so opening in, opening in houston then going to seattle and then to uh, uh, toronto uh, international exhibitions are a highly complicated uh, it's a highly complicated process uh, one um, the logistics uh, of it uh, you are transporting like we had a plane uh, 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 the 20 early 20th century silver ghost rolls royce uh, to large palanquins uh, and uh, fragile objects as a glass hookah bowl so the logistic and safety uh, of the object and then of course the research and publication um, and uh, no private museum can directly uh, showcase art in an international venue so everything goes through the government uh, because okay. the government government is the overall custodian um of our art so okay. um now now is well uh, uh, sort of well laid out process yet um it is it is a long process yeah yeah because when, the minute when you said you went to these countries for the uh, you know i thought international exhibitions would have been that people would be you know invited and then when you said that you had to ship everything so that was like the first thing that came to my mind that logistics would have been so crazy so you would have Absolutely. to take everything by ship right no Or... the, uh, the 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 car uh, the car rolls royce a silver ghost uh, by ship uh, the other 300 objects uh, uh, traveled by air uh, mm-hmm. through you know different shipments okay And there are you know now uh, a specialized uh, uh, art handling companies um, who take over the job of you know creating and freighting right right okay so uh, tell us i'm just curious what are your hobbies and interests i mean are they are they uh, the normal uh, things that you watch in the bollywood like horse riding and sword fighting or do you have some normal <laughs> normal interests and hobbies Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Uh, 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 normally, interest and hobby. Though I, though I live in a medieval fort, uh, I'm not a medieval knight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I, I love watching movies and uh, um, 
I, for last three, four years, because of this uh, international exhibition, uh, it was very uh, strenuous and very busy uh, time. There was hardly any time for any hobbies. Uh, but I, I love to travel and I, I uh, love to watch movies. And I used to play uh, cricket as a sport. So I do watch cricket uh, from time to time. Okay, okay great. Yeah. So what about horse riding and sword fighting? Do you do that or no? <laughs> 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 no, 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 not really. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, tell me, you are a member of a lot of uh, committees, uh, Karni. So, what yeah. are these about? Tell us, give us some details. So, these are uh, mostly uh, art committees. Uh, so, I, I was in Government of India's committee on uh, uh, on on museum grants. Uh, so, the okay. Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Uh, sanctions uh, grants uh, to private and public museums and okay. so the committee members are supposed to sort of you know scrutinize uh, uh, agree to what proposal is good or bad uh, right and mostly all these committees are are related to heritage art conservation uh, i recently uh, i'm working uh, on a committee uh, which is about a new museum that is coming at the Sadar Patel uh, statue uh, precinct. Okay. Um, and it, uh, it's a museum uh, that uh, the government of Gujarat, backed by the government of India, uh, is about celebrating the contribution of uh, Indian royal families to the unification of India. So Sadar, Sadar, Patel's, Sadar Patel's role um, of integrating the uh, princely states uh, into the union of India. So that's an important part uh, of our history and often okay. uh, forgotten forgotten part of the history where the royal family is really sacrificed uh, to in the larger interest of union of india uh, to merge uh, into indian union and and so this museum uh, which is still at ideation level um, will will celebrate that contribution of the indian princely states Amazing. That I think is going to be a very interesting uh, project, I'm sure. So you will, I mean, all of you uh, at, I mean, at the palaces or museums, you will have to probably give some of your uh, curate, I mean, you would have to curate this museum, give some. Uh, some yeah, yeah. So the, yeah the, the committee members at the moment uh, are outlining the scope of the museum uh, right. as to what are the stories that uh, we need to tell. So first of all, I mean, like, you know, for instance, uh, there were uh, more than uh, uh, 500 plus uh, small and big uh, princely states uh, before India became independent. Now, um, you know, this museum, for instance, uh, cannot be a place where you tell uh, individual story of each of these uh, princely states, but it is a collective uh, story um, of the contribution of the royal families uh, to Indian culture and um, the aesthetics, and also okay. sort of you know make make it engaging, uh, make it interesting to the visitors. Yes, uh, there would be an element of uh, um, many important museums contributing uh, okay. to the museum because museum museum without objects uh, is nothing. So there would be an element where we may loan objects uh, uh, to to the museum. Yes. Okay. Coming to the pandemic, uh, Karni, uh, it's hit the tourism uh, sector big time. So yes. how did Mehrangar Museum fare in this time? Yeah, so really, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, very troubled time uh, for the tourism uh, sector. Uh, when we had the lockdown in March uh, 2020, um, and then there was a long, long period uh, of uh, closure. Uh, we reopened. Uh, we sort of, you know, started doing a bit well, and then again, a second wave uh, came in. So we are really operating. We are really operating at, um, you know, 15, 15 percent of our original numbers uh, and revenues. Uh, okay. So, like all 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 organizations uh, who are passing through this difficult time, uh, each one is sort of you know together in this uh, difficult time. Uh, it's uh, important to keep the staff morale uh, high, 
to engage True. with them uh, from time to time uh, so we are we reopened on 8th of july again uh, it's going to be a month um, so there's a study flow of visitors coming in again but uh, just just for your viewers uh, you know a uh, uh, closing a museum uh, is not an easy exercise it's not as simple as in a lockdown you uh, uh, you know close a office um, uh, museums are have responsibility of looking after objects and and even in a lockdown situation uh, you need to have systems in place uh, that will take care of uh, the collection you know you cannot just close your stores or the galleries uh, for a couple of months and just you know reopen again so uh, now there are systems in place where you know the galleries are periodically opened luckily we have staff on site uh, mm -hmm. so you know the galleries are periodically open uh, the reserved collection so for your audience you know just about very small percentage is actually on view in the galleries mm -hmm. you know about okay. 90% of the objects are actually in the store so okay. those objects uh, uh, require uh, constant care and maintenance uh, so that was a, a again a, a challenging aspect uh, that yeah. how do you take care of your object and how do you take care of a, a 15th century building uh, when everything is locked up right yeah that is i mean now to just to think about it because uh, i have seen in uh, hollywood films you know like everything is uh, uh, light uh, protected and sound protected and all of that yeah. and then now you're talking about yes you know when you shut down you would have to have uh, you know so many uh, so many things to maintain yes that's that's so true yeah. Sure. Uh, during the pandemic, I we've been informed that you uh, you know contributed to the villages in Rajasthan. Would you like to tell us about that? Yeah, the second uh, the second wave uh, uh, mentally hit me uh, very hard, and okay. uh, and 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 it was a time when you know uh, I was approached by several people from especially from rural uh, parts of uh, around my village and. around jodhpur you know for oxygen or hospital bed or um, other things and i was uh, really sort of you know uh, struck with the fact uh, that you know in spite of uh, all the resources um, mm. we as a society uh, did not um, sort of you know meet up to the expectation uh, in 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 21st century india uh who is sort of you know progressing towards uh, a developing uh, a nation a developed nation um people should not die because of lack of oxygen uh people should not uh, be um, sort of you know stranded uh, uh for lack of hospital uh, bed yeah. uh, right i think it 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 really showed a uh, severe cracks uh in our system and it also showed severe cracks uh in our medical facilities and it was more so severe uh, in uh in rural parts of uh Rajasthan um and that's where i uh, in a very small way uh, shifted my focus uh to the rural scenario and uh, where there are hardly any uh, sort of you know just basic medical uh, facilities Uh, okay. and uh, so it was sort of in a part awareness part raising some funds uh, and diverting those funds towards uh, upgradation of the medical uh, facilities and i also uh, in that time uh, started a online uh, blog uh, which was called meri awaaz suno um, and sort of appealing to people that um, you know this is a collective responsibility because there was also a time where everyone was blaming the government blaming the system and the point that i made was like who is the system and and it is uh, you and i who are the system and in and if 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 we don't actively participate in the system then you know all this uh, whatsapp group discussion uh, or what what is popularly called the drawing room discussion is all futile uh, and i'm sort of happy to share that it did have uh uh a limited impact i could say uh it it did raise up consciousness of people i had positive feedback from uh people then this i moved my focus from raising the issue to uh also 
raising some important issue for our rural india you will be surprised to know that where in a country where more than 70% of our population is, is what we say is in rural parts of india mm-hmm. while there's something called an while there's something called an urban planning uh there is nothing called rural planning uh so while while cities have master plans urban master plans uh the the rural towns and villages uh don't have any master plan uh which means that there's no planning there's no forward planning for sewage there's no forward planning for waste management uh there is no uh planning for conservation of uh you know eco uh this thing or uh you know ponds and lakes uh and everything is ad hoc um so okay. uh, that is another area that i'm keen to work uh in the future alongside that that try and at least have some model group of villages who would adopt the ideas that we are mutually discussing among ourselves mm-hmm. that is that is an awesome thought because uh, yes that is true because we need to uh, you know collectively do this and you rightly said that system is you and me and uh, you know uh, karni that i have been during the pandemic i have interviewed so many uh, people and you know uh, you know some there were ngos that were looking after hunger there were uh, there were ngos that were looking after clothing there were ngos that were looking at all round development and you know i was amazed at the kind of kindness and compassion that went around but uh, you're right i we have not spoken to anybody from the villages per se we had people from bombay and bangalore and gujarat and um, yes there were resources that were shared to the villages like uh, we just had uh, a bad flood at uh, ratnagiri and chiplun and all that and we uh, you know we i know of people even in from our building we you know we got stuff together and resources and we mobilized the same towards these uh, villages and it was it was beautiful so yeah. um, okay tell me karni like what is your motto like what is the one motto that drives you yeah i think um uh especially within the context of the period that we've gone through uh, which actually has been a very tough period uh, for everyone um uh, the the pandemic and i think i think it's it's a uh, it's important uh, to see uh, the beauty in um, the simplicity of life mm-hmm. and 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 being, and and being grateful uh, uh, that uh, you are alive and to be grateful uh, that you are healthy uh, and uh, you know just enjoying small pleasures of life um, yes. you know i think i think what covid showed was fragility of life that how fragile the life is i mean you know so many of your neighbors friends you know just you know you just next morning you got up and said you know he, he's gone uh, i mean right. life is, is as fragile as that and if right. you and i are leading a healthy life uh, if we are leading a, a, a pleasant life i think that's the greatest blessing uh, that we have and i think we should cherish that uh, blessing uh, and be grateful uh, to what we have and and try and help uh, people around us and 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 try and make i think our lives have become too in, entangled and it's it's important to simplify it and you know just uh, just carry on <laughs> that is such a beautiful thought you know absolutely because i remember during the first wave it was like life was just a number so many deaths so many deaths so many deaths and we were like oh my god this has this has so many of our loved ones and families or even you know uh, families of our uh, acquaintances or whatever so yes like you're saying uh, this this pandemic really showed how fragile life is and uh, can you tell us about your inspiration like inspiration of everything like probably what got you to the museum or anyways inspiration of life yeah i think uh, there been uh, s- uh, several of them uh, as far as uh, uh, prof- uh, professional inspiration is concerned um, uh, one of our uh, uh, former trustee who unfortunately is no more uh, his name is mr martin singh and uh, he was called the textile guru uh, of india and uh, 
he sort of you know led me into the professional field and okay. sort of you know inspired from time to time uh, to sort of you know sustain myself because there can be because it's it's, it's a it's an it's an evolving uh, career you know it's not sort of uh, uh, grass is not green all the time but uh, right. i think he in in those moments uh, really made me see things uh, clearly mm-hmm. um, and uh, so that is more at a professional level and uh, i think at personal level uh, uh, my father um, he um, um, i think has really uh, demonstrated um, he's he's 87 and uh, uh, still uh, writes uh, profusely uh, leads a healthy life uh, in spite of you know you know several restrictions that came in covid um, that tries to keep himself uh, occupied uh, so if he's bored with writing um, he would start cooking uh, if he's uh, bored with <laughs> if he's bored with cooking um, he will do something else uh, so uh, that um, that's a really good person to sort of you know look up to uh, that in in all circumstances good or bad uh, right. he's uh, held it, he's held his head, head high I mean, uh, you know, I read about Iki Guy, and this is exactly what your dad's doing. There is yeah. some quaint village in Japan, and they said everybody, uh, all these old people, you know, like my mother calls them, uh, seniors. You can't call them old people. You call can't call them senior citizens, yeah. seniors. So yeah. they just keep doing things that inspire them, and I think that is such a lovely uh, thing to do. Um, that is uh, that is really good. Uh, can you tell us? about one incident that must have changed your life or you know uh, made gave you that paradigm shift or some kind of uh, you know do you do you recall any any kind of uh, this yeah i would i would, I would say that this uh, 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 recent uh, uh, during the second wave uh, that 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 idea that came uh, that moment to speak up uh, and to start the blog meri awaaz suno uh, was 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 an important shift uh, which i want to pursue alongside uh, what i am doing uh, right. because i i feel that uh, there are serious uh, uh, changes that need to be make, made in the rural uh, uh, scenario whether it's health and hygiene or whether it's awareness or general development uh i i would say i had lost interest in 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 village uh, and uh, you know what goes on uh, there though uh, you know i have deep roots uh, in the uh, rural landscape um but i think i think this second wave really sort of you know hit me hard uh, and and uh, you know it sort of changed my focus because i've i've all along been been a very focused professional towards uh, the museum uh and its activities um okay. i didn't i didn't see i didn't see anything beyond uh mehrangarh um but i think uh, um this this last second wave um has sort of you know allowed me some clarity uh, perspective though i sort of you know, continue to have my focus but i think it's important to contribute uh, towards uh, the uh, the other important things which are around you correct so uh, about meri awaaz suno karni tell us do you do you uh, is it like a blog or uh, i mean blog or a blog like do you make uh, reels and videos yeah i make videos and then i i, I post it on uh, insta and uh, facebook and also there's a youtube uh, channel uh, there's been okay. a little gap of about about a, about a month uh, because there were some illnesses in the family uh, but i mm-hmm. i now plan to sort of again uh, do a weekly uh, uh, session okay um, on on so I, i pick up different i pick up different issues of a village mm-hmm. uh, and, and then i speak on that so like i would okay. speak uh, i would speak about uh, sort of an you know, earth forestation There, there's an important concept in um, rural rajasthan which is called oran uh, which are these sacred groves uh, so mm-hmm. these were lungs these were lungs of Uh, each village so each village had a, right. uh, a large field of trees 
uh, which were designated as uh, sacred groves so that people didn't cut them and they were grasslands for grazing livestock and also served as uh, lungs for the village unfortunately as urbanization is happening in villages these are being cleared out mm-hmm. and uh, i'm glad that you know in last couple of months there is a sort of you know heightened awareness about porans and um, you know a lot of people in different parts of western rajasthan are in their own way are taking up the issue um, so i hope like my my appeal in meri awaaz suno was just not meri awaaz suno i i i had i had appealed to people that you know why why everyone should uh, have uh, should express what is going around you and everyone should have a meri awaaz which should be heard by uh, people right and what i like about you karni is that you know though you are uh, it's like meri awaaz suno but you're also a doer so it's not uh, you know you're putting action to what you're saying so which is which is the good part because there are people who just yeah. say things like like you rightly said you know whatsapp groups and drawing room uh, discussions and then there is n- nothing okay i have to read this indra indro Thakur says Karni Bana is one of the best persons in Jodhpur. So you have, you have a great, uh, great fan following. There were a whole lot of comments, but you know I miss them because you know we were having a great conversation. Okay, uh, so before we get on to um, your your message to our viewers and stuff, I want to uh, request everybody that has joined us uh, from uh, your account, Karni Jasol or Merinder. uh quote or you know please follow the paradigm shift page we bring you beautiful insp- inspiring stories like uh, karni's story that go out and do things and you know for the betterment of the society and everybody that is follow uh, has joined us from the paradigm shift we will be tagging in merangar fort so if you are ever in jodhpur you know go and have a look i mean all, from all what i've seen it looks amazing and uh, we will be tagging uh, meri uh, uh, just just for my information are these meri awaaz suno another account on um, instagram or it's under your name your personal it's under my name it's under my name okay. okay so we will be tagging you anyways it will be yeah. tagged once we uh, you know put this video up so guys go and have a look and i'm sure you know we could probably once we listen to the problems we could probably contribute uh, in any small way that you know every little contribution i think uh, makes a lot of difference so uh, before we uh, finish uh, can you tell us give us one last message or whatever message for our viewers so just before i do that i just want to make a small comment of you saying that you know uh, you you're just not saying but you're doing um my my when i started media was you know my idea was to just speak about issues uh, and 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 there was there was so much feedback uh, from people uh, that um it, we we empathize with you we also have similar thoughts as you have we also want to do things but we don't know how to do it uh mm-hmm. and and that's how i got the idea that you know uh it's just not sort of you know ideate things but also demonstrate to people how it can be done uh okay. and that's when the idea of uh, um sort of you know following up with um you know local panchayats etc uh, came mm-hmm. up and 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 i hope more and more younger people my my appeal was to younger people that they should come forward uh and be an active part uh of the system rather than criticizing uh the system yes <laughs> <laughs> so i think I, i think the myth, i think uh, i i think in 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 the in the in the times that we are living in, in uh i think uh, there's a universal uh, message uh of um, uh being calm being kind uh i i see uh, more and more uh and it's it's mainly because i think the 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 side effect of what is around us uh that people are uh, slowly uh, losing the sense of kindness uh because they are becoming impatient uh, uh you know they are they're rude to each other within the family outside the family um 
and i think uh, this is a challenging time for all of us uh, to just you know uh, remain calm uh, you know the the troubled times will pass uh, better times will come and and uh, we, you know we can we, we can sail through this difficult time uh, together um, so just just be kind to each other i think that would be my message very simple message let's be kind to each other absolutely that is so beautiful karni uh, jasol what a great initiative okay so we've uh, this karni's father sahitya academy awarded by the rajasthan government this is yashpal uh, thank you yashpal for uh, you know uh, giving me this reference and it's been such a wonderful wonderful conversation and there was so much to learn i mean you know like we we've, we've always been just uh you know like uh, viewers in a museum where we just go take a you know take a round and oh, okay you know you are in your in the fantasy world okay this must have happened that must have happened you've made stories yeah. in your head but today to learn what all goes in the preservation and the conservation and of course you know getting everything together that is amazing so thank you this so much and and, and uh, th- thank you for having me over and i've been keenly uh, following your page and it's a great initiative and i hope you are able to collaborate um uh sort of a much more i have a, a very dynamic curatorial team and i think i i will uh, sort of you know put you guys in touch and maybe one of the times one of the times you should speak to a museum curator as well amazing thank you so yeah. much that is really good so right. thank you so much everybody and uh, for joining us and we will be posting this live right after and we will be tagging in everything so you can go and see mr kanni jasol's all his videos about meri awaz suno and we would love to have your comments thank you so much everybody thank you kanni thank you, take care bye bye bye